Thank you, Eileen. Dear uh, Reverend Fathers who are present uh, online, also here in this room with us, and to all the choir directors, choir members from all over the, our Bishop's Conference from Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei, and to our other friends who have just joined us, welcome, good evening to all of you. Uh, this is the workshop for our to introduce the new revised hymnal, not new, rather it is a revised, uh, renewed hymnal of Sing Your Praise to God. And to those who have not yet seen uh, that hymnal, this is the hymnal in this particular format, form, this size, is blue in color. Some of you may already, uh, already have a copy for yourself. And if you do have a copy, we'd like to invite you to have it close to you. As we introduce this hymnal tonight, uh, we will also ask you to flip through the pages to, to familiarize with the content of this hymnal. This morning, we had another session a uh, similar session uh, to introduce the hymnal to uh, all the bishops, the priests, and the religious in our Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. And this evening is uh, meant more for the lay leaders, especially for the choir directors, choir members uh, from the parishes in our region. So, once again, welcome to all of you. My name is Neil. And my surname is Ma MH. I come from Kota Kinabalu and I'm part of the team that have worked on this hymnal since 2014. And tonight I've been tasked by the committee to share with you our work that we have done on this hymnal. And now tonight we will share with you how this whole project came about, what is the reason behind this review and renew and the, pros the process that has taken place, how it has uh, developed and also to introduce to you the members in this committee. We will also uh, introduce to you the content of this hymnal and later part of uh, tonight's workshop, we will also share with you uh, some of the principles that the committee has adopted, how the hymns have been uh, shortlisted for this first uh, compilation of this revised hymnal. And at the end of our workshop tonight, we will also have time to share with you a little bit about the uh, purpose and uh, place of chanting, chanting in our Catholic liturgy. And we have uh, Cheng Mei also uh, on board later to share with us on this particular topic and uh, do not uh, fear uh, my dear friends tonight the session will be uh, the session all will be available in the powerpoint slide and we will share with you the powerpoint slide after the end of the presentation so thank you for joining us to those who have just come in and we will proceed with the session of course we will also have time for question and answer to which our committee here will try our best to answer all your uh, inquiry. So with that then, my dear friends, let us begin. And I will invite the technical team to show the slide. So dear friends, tonight, is the introduction and briefing on this particular hymnal. If you see, this is the picture of the revised hymnal. It's a different outlook from the hymnal that we used to have. And this new hymn, this revised hymnal is uh, focusing on the English hymns for the time being. Next page. So if you remember back, dear friends, our hymnal sing your praise to god or in short uh, sypg this is the format that we are so used to it is in the bounded form with a clip with a metal clip and with pages that consist of 
the lyrics of the hymns and also some prayers. If you can see, uh, I'm holding up here the two editions that we have of this particular hymnal. The first edition, if you see the smaller, the smaller version of it, it is the first edition that came out in 1970. And if on my right hand, which is the slightly bigger version, and this is the Sing Your Praise to God that was further underwent revision dated 1985. So our hymnal actually dated way back in 1970. Next slide. So the first edition, as we saw just now, that smaller booklet, this SYPG was first published in 1970, actually by our Bishop's Conference and the Regional Liturgy Commission then with the Bishop Emeritus James Chan has commissioned this particular hymnal to be used for our faithful here in our conference for Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. And why in that particular year of 1970, if you, uh, those of us who can remember, our the renewal of our church through the Second Vatican Council that allows for other languages in the vernacular to be celebrated at our liturgy that is other than Latin. So the English language was uh, given the permission to be celebrated. So with that, then we need hymns in the English language. So that's why our conference then quickly assembled, compiled hymns that were available then in the, in the early 70s, late 60s and early 70s, so that our faithful could come together to worship in spirit and in truth at every Mass in the English language. And to be able to participate more actively, fully, consciously, for the liturgy is a source and summit of our Christian life. Next slide. So then you may ask, my dear friends, why this particular revision? Next. So this revision, this particular edition of the first edition of 1970 actually had uh, some more hymns added to it in 1985, which came out with the second edition. So that is why if you notice the first edition of 1970 had uh, lesser pages and with the 1985 version, we have more hymns added to it, not only hymns, but also other prayers and devotions added onto it. Next. And also a number of other hymns were also added onto this uh, 1970 hymnal, but quite a number of hymns when they were added did not have copyright permission for use. They were just being compiled for the use of our people to sing at mass. Next. And furthermore, some of these hymns as well that were being compiled, there was actually not much review being done whether these hymns were appropriate for use at liturgical celebrations. So given this background then, uh, dear friends, this is the reason why, next slide, in 2014, our Bishops Conference of Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei has seen the need, it is time to review and to renew this particular hymnal. So CBC MSB has mandated the Episcopal Regional Liturgy Commission or in short ERLC to look into the revision and to improve on this hymnal, English hymnal. And this liturgy commission for the region form a committee called LMC, Liturgical Music Committee, to undertake this revision task. And you can see a picture of one of the meetings of this committee. Next. And 
the members of this committee headed by Father Leonard Lexon from Kuala Lumpur. And these are the other members in the committee that come from the various dioceses in our Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. They came together uh, since 2014 to work on this revision task. Next. So what was the process that the committee undertook? To start off with, after the mandate given by the Bishops' Conference in 2014, a letter was sent out to all parishes in the conference to ask each parish, the choir uh, members, the directors, to list out what are the hymns in that sing your praise to God that is always being used, seldom used, or never used. So there are three columns, three listings of hymns that are always used, seldom used, or never used. Then each of these parish were to uh, submit their feedback to the liturgical music committee. Next. Then once the committee has received all the feedback from all the parishes throughout the conference, then the committee revisited the liturgical and correlated documents of the Second Vatican Council. Because, dear friends, in order to re-examine whether the hymns are suitable to be used at Mass, we need to go back to the core. That is to go back to our liturgical documents, for example, like Sacrosanctum Concilium, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Musicum Sacrum, and others. Next. With these references and our uh, consultations, we have actually reported back to the bishops because this particular project of reviewing the hymnal is not does not come from the committee. Rather, it is the project initiated by our bishops, by the bishops' conference. So it is their project, and LMC, Liturgical Music Committee, is the committee that helps the bishop in this process of review. So with that then, in our meetings since 2014, whatever outcome from our meetings, we reported back to the bishops every year on the progress, even the guiding principles that help the committee to review which hymns are suitable or not suitable for mass, all these were presented to our bishops. And the bishops are very well informed and they too have contributed ideas in this process. So it is a very... Uh, a very wide participation here. And of course, we have added the antiphon text and also the music notations, acknowledging all copyright owners as part of the very important process in this review exercise. Next. So then, that is the, uh, dear friends, this is the background, how this uh, particular review uh, was uh, started back in 2014 and the process that was undertaken. Now I'd like to introduce to you this hymnal. So those of you who have this hymnal with you, so I'd like you to flip through the pages to familiarize what is the content of this hymnal. Firstly, from pages 1 to 18, we have the order of mass in the English language. So could you quickly uh, flip through your SYPG hymnal, pages 1 to 18. To just quickly look through, these are the order of Mass. Also, in the order of Mass, given the music notation for the chants. Next, we have also included the antiphons, especially the entrance antiphon and the communion antiphon, you can refer to page 20, from page, pages 20 to 
58. And on page 20, we have also included some simple sum tones for the possible singing of our antiphons. We have to encourage choirs to actually chant the antiphons. And these are some suggestions. Of course, they are not uh, the end of it. That means this is not the final. This is the only um, sum tones that you can use, but you can use others as well. So these are su some suggestions, uh, sum tones that choir can use for four-liner sum tones, three-liner sum tones, and two-liner sum tones. So from pages 20 to 58, you can see all the various liturgical season and time of the entrance and communion antiphons. Next, from pages 59 to 428 will consist of all the hymns and the chants in our Sing Your Praise to God. And they are all arranged in alphabetical order from hymn number one right until page 428. If you can just flip through the page, the pages together with me and just look through they are all arranged in alphabetical order right until hymn number 368 so all together then dear friends from the from the former SYPG that consists of about 500 over hymns, this re review, this revised hymnal now has about 300 over hymns and chants for us to use. Next, we also have from pages 429 to 432, right of Eucharistic exposition and benediction since most parishes would have this rite conducted frequently so that's why the committee has included this particular rite into the hymnal for use at parishes next to help us and the user using this hymnal much more uh, easier we have a list of index to facilitate greater ease of use of the hymnal so if you look on page 433 we have an indexing based on the titles titles of the hymns so if you look at it it is in alphabetical order from 433 to page 436 so if you can just look through the listings all these are hymns according arranged according to titles in alphabetical order the next index is by first liners on page 437 to 443 so dear friends sometimes when we want to look for a particular hymn we cannot remember the title but we remember the first line because we're so used to singing this, those hymns, we can remember the first line. So we have also index based on first liners to help us to look for the hymns. Next is for the use of uh, during the different parts of Mass from pages 444 to 447. So if you could just flip through the pages together with me on page 444 you can see hymns that are classified as entrance suitable to be used for the entrance then on page 445 hymns that are suitable for use during offertory same page 445 you have suitable hymns that are uh, suitable for communion on page 446 hymns suitable for after communion and continue to 447 then on page 448 onwards 
we have indexed by seasons and liturgical times. So you have, if you look through on page 448, those of you who have the hymnal in your hand, we have the ordinary time on page 449. We have Advent time hymns that are suitable for Advent. Then on page 450, hymns suitable for Christmas, Epiphany, Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, and so on and so forth. Right up to uh, page 400 and uh, 52 that consists of the Latin and the other occasions as well, like funerals, during Marian feasts, during sacrament of holy matrimony, and feast days, processions, during sacrament of confirmation. So all these uh, are available for our reference. And lastly, our hymnal at the back of the the last part of the hymnal from pages 454 to 459 will consist of some documents of the church that talks about sacred music in the liturgy. For example, on 454, you have document from Sacrosanctum Concilium, 455 from Musicum Sacrum, and the rest you can also refer to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, also some excerpt from Pope, our present Pope, that is Pope Francis. So that then, my dear friends, is the content of our hymnal. So very much improved with a new outlook, with the music notation added in. So that's why some we received some feedback from, our, from the grassroots that says that this hymnal now is so much bigger, bulkier, even some parishes have no place to put the hymnal because the pews are not, uh, are, do not have enough space to uh, hold this particular size of hymnal. So dear friends, music notation is being added into our hymnal for this uh, revised uh, edition is to help us to sing the hymns and the chants uh, according to the composer. So because without the, without the music notation, that is where we get a variation to the melody. And some even of the melody can run far away from the original uh, composer's melodic line. So hopefully with this, it will help to uh, improve and uh, further strengthen the music repertoire and appreciation in our region. So next, dear friends, this SYPG becomes the official Catholic hymnal for our region of Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. The bishops of our region in our region have already confirmed that this is the official Catholic hymnal as the title suggests on the front cover so what does it mean then dear friends this particular official hymnal is not meant to police police meaning uh, to restrict uh, the usage of other hymns rather these hymns are suggestions that have already number one have received proper copyright license so rest assured that when you use the hymns in this compilation, they all are uh, legally uh, are legal and we have already have the copyright license to them. Furthermore, as what is going to be shared uh, in the next part of this presentation tonight, uh, the guiding principles, how the committee has selected these hymns into this compilation based on very rigorous uh, review based on doctrinal, the literary, as well as the musical elements and traits. So then, dear friends, the committee hope that all of us will look at this hymnal as a rich resource and guide to parishes in their, uh, in their singing and in the appreciation of sacred music. 
at the same time, this hymnal, we hope that we see this hymnal as a unifying factor for our conference, meaning to say that whenever we have a combined gathering or retreat or conference that uh, people come from various uh, regions in our conference from Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, what are the common hymns that everybody would know how to sing when they come together for a combined or common liturgical celebration. So at least the hymns in this hymnal will go towards uh, unifying our people that we can sing together these common hymns. So with that then, next, we have two editions of our hymnal. This hymnal that you see that I'm holding and in the picture is called the People's Edition. And we have the next point. Thank you. And this edition is in use since Lent last year, 2021. And this People's Edition, if you look at the music notation, it is in the simplified notation form, in the single line notation to ease our people to be able to sing the hymns. So for musicians, we have for choir uh, musicians, we have good news for you. Uh, we have an accompaniment edition that means in the arrangement that are most suited for musicians, choir directors. Next point, thank you. Can we have the next point? The accompaniment edition will be coming out soon, hopefully by sometime this year. So look out for this. The committee uh, in our meeting yesterday have approved for the printing of 1,000 copies of the accompaniment edition to facilitate musicians to be able to play the hymns in this compilation. The people's edition, you can already look, they have been already sent to each diocese. So please uh, refer to your individual diocese where to buy the people's edition. Accompaniment edition will be out soon. Next. So what is the task then of this particular committee? The committee's task since 2014 is to select hymns appropriate for Mass for the Sundays and also for the liturgical seasons. So this is the primary task of the committee. Next. So to guide the committee to look at appropriate hymns, what are the appropriate hymns to be used for Mass, the committee visited, as what was shared earlier, various church documents that help in its review process. So here are some of the documents that we have used for your information. The first document is we looked at CCC, Catechism of the Catholic Church, and in particular, Article number 1157 that talks about hymns have to aid have to support and elevate the better to express the actions of sacred liturgy. So sacred music has to fulfill this task according to that three criteria. The beauty of the expressive prayer to be able to involve participation of the assembly and also to the solemn character of the celebration. Next, we also visited Musicum Sacrum. And one of the principles we adopted is taken from article number nine that looks at the spirit of the liturgical celebration. In order to determine which hymns are suitable or not suitable, appropriate or lesser appropriate for Mass, we have to know the spirit of the liturgical celebration. And we have to look at the nature of the various parts of the liturgy. The entrance, 
the offertory, communion, after communion. Each of these parts has its own purpose and objective. So we need to revisit all of this. So the committee members actually took some time to revisit uh, the church documents on this particular point. Next. And when we talk about active participation, dear friends, it is not only congregation singing together the hymns, but active participation will also, will also mean interior experience, interior disposition, that we are able to participate at Mass even through sacred silence, through listening to the Word. So Vatican Council too wish that there's a greater awareness when we come to Mass, we are more aware of the mystery that we celebrate at every liturgical celebration and to connect that mystery, which is Christ himself, to our daily living of our faith. And this is in Sacramentum Caritatis, Article 52. Next. The committee also evaluated constantly all the hymns that came into our hand. We examined each one of them, especially using Article 1157 of CCC, Catechism of the Catholic Church, that if you look at the underline, it says that sacred music glorifies the Lord. And in turn, it sanctifies the people at worship. When we come to Mass, our main purpose is to glorify God. And sacred music is one of the means for us to glorify God. And in turn, the Lord will sanctify His people at worship. So this is a very pertinent and important principle that the committee has adopted. Next. In the preparation and implementation of the Roman Missal, it also states, next, the use of music at the Eucharist is to enable full, conscious, and active participation. When we come to Mass, we come fully conscious and, as mentioned just now, active not only actively doing something, but also through our internal disposition. Next. Composers can embellish the songs that the assembly sings with harmonies, and I'm sure many of our choir members are already doing this, and also with instrumentation like descants and so forth. Next. Music style that we use in our liturgical celebration should not distract the assembly. We should adhere and respect the structure of the liturgical text. So these are uh, some more principles that we looked at and important points. Next. Quoting GIRM, General Instruction of the Roman Missal, Article 40, that talks about the great importance of singing at Mass should not be absent, especially on Sundays and on holy days of obligation. So singing takes an important role and place in our liturgical celebration. Next. Therefore, our committee have come up with this particular guiding principle when we examine each of the 500 over hymns of the former edition. The committee over the years took a very uh, rigorous examination of each hymn based on these three elements. Firstly, doctrinal. Doctrinal meaning, does the hymn refer to the Paschal mystery? Because this is the very purpose we come for Mass. We come for the liturgical celebration. is to celebrate the Paschal mystery. Does it have the ecclesial dimension? Does it 
talk about us coming together, the, the worship assembly coming together as one. And does it fulfill the theme of the liturgy? Does, does it have biblical source? We also look at the language, whether it is too casual or it is appropriate for use at Mass and the musical elements. So therefore, next, quoting Musicum Sacrum Article 6, the meaning and proper nature of each part and each song, the committee carefully examined and reviewed. So dear friends, here we'd like to share with you some songs following the different parts of Mass, how the committee have uh, gone through the process of review so that you know what, is, what goes on in the mind and the process that, were, that was involved in examining the hymns. Next. So let's look at the first part of Mass that normally we, we will sing. That is the entrance. So the committee went back to church documents to look at what is the actual purpose of the entrance. And in GIRM number 47, Article 47, here, if we look at the underline to help us to be more focused, the purpose of the entrance chant singing at this time of the Mass is to open the celebration. It was the unity of those who have gathered together to introduce the thoughts to the mystery of the liturgical season of festivity, and it also accompanies the procession in of the ministers. Next. And here, the entrance, secondary role, it draws people to the altar. It focuses them to the center. Their central focus is on the altar, the point of the mass. And also to accompany the action of the incensing when we have feast days or solemnities. So with this then, dear friends, let us look at some examples and also the process that the, the committee underwent. Next. Here is an example of a hymn from the former edition listed under the entrance A13. Here we are. I'm sure most of us would know this hymn. Here we are, all together as we sing our song joyfully. Here we are, joined together as we pray will always be. So what the committee did, looking at this particular hymn as an example, the committee actually took those three elements of review, doctrinal. Does this hymn talk about the Paschal mystery of Jesus being the center and purpose of us coming together to celebrate the liturgy? Anywhere in the lyrics that talks about this on the Paschal mystery. If we examine the lyrics of the song, the focus of this, of this particular song tend to be focused more on ourselves. Here we are, all together, we sing joyfully. We join together, we pray. We now come together as friends, we celebrate, but it doesn't say celebrate what? Keep the fire burning, kindle it with care. We all come and join and sing. So this particular hymn tends to focus more on ourselves. And if we review back the purpose of a liturgical celebration, Catechism of the Catholic Church, Article 1157, talks about the purpose of us coming together is to glorify God 
and not to glorify ourselves. So with this then, dear friends, one of the element doctrinal is already not appropriate. When we look at the language, how about the language as the second element of review? The language here would be more casual, very casual. And how about the musical quality? It, is, it tends to be more Sunday school, more campfire-like music quality. Da, da, da. Da 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 da. So because of this, then, dear friends, taking these three elements as our guideline for review, this hymn finally, what do you think? Accepted or not accepted to be in the hymnal? Can our technician press twice? This is the answer. Because of that, this particular hymn has been omitted from our present hymnal. Next, let's look at another example. In the former edition, hymn, We Have Come Into His House, A61. I'm sure many of us will know this hymn as well. Let's forget about ourselves. And magnify the Lord and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves. And magnify the Lord and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves. And magnify the Lord and worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's take back the review process, what the committee underwent. Number one, doctrinal. Does it talk about the Paschal mystery? A little bit with the mention of worshipping, magnifying Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. How about the ecclesial dimension? Does it talk about me personally or us together. Of course, we have the article ourselves. Okay. How about the language? Is the language more appropriate for edifying God, worshipping God? Or it is more casual? Mm, little bit okay, some a bit not okay. And how about the music quality? Definitely very campfire. Da, 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 da. And depends on how the musicians play this song. Some musicians will play this song in a very jazzy mood. Da, 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 da. Let's look at another example side by side. Can we have the next? Praise to the Lord. Also in the A section in the former hymnal. Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him for He is Thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. Let's take the three elements of review. Let's compare this second hymn to the first of A61. Doctrinal. Does this hymn a22 talks about the Paschal mystery. Yes, it does. It even goes further to say that our purpose of gathering 
is to the Lord's altar. It is the Lord who gathers us together and we come to praise Him. For why do we praise God? Because He is our health and our salvation. So if we compare the lyrics of the second hymn compared to the first hymn, A22 and A61, we can see now the theology and the doctrinal elements is more solid on the second hymn. Even the language, how the lyrics are being phrased and expressed seems to be expressing and edifying God much better. And how about the melody? Very appropriate as a hymn for Mass. So with that then, the committee has finally reviewed and make a decision. Can we have double click? Thank you. The first hymn has been omitted and the second hymn, Praise to the Lord, retained in this present compilation. So dear friends, this simple example goes to show what the committee underwent reviewing the 500 over hymns one by one over the period of six to seven years. So dear friends, when we use this hymnal, rest assured that these hymns have gone through rigorous review to ensure that they are liturgically sound, doctrinally apt, and in terms also for its language use and music elements. Next, the offertory. Quoting GIRM Article 74, that talks about how the procession of bringing the gifts is accompanied by an offertory chant. And it talks about singing accompanying this rite of bringing up the gifts. We also look at another document, next page, from Sacramentum Caritatis, Article 47, that talks slightly more deeper on the meaning of the presentation of the gifts during this period of the Mass. That is, the bread and the wine that we bring to the altar is taken up by Jesus, the Redeemer, and Jesus will transform these gifts, present it to God the Father. And when we bring up these gifts of bread and wine that represents all of us, the gifts of the people, it also encompasses all our pain and suffering. Everything that, has, that we go through in our life has value in the eyes of God. And this is how we are being united into this redemptive sacrifice of Christ. So with that then, dear friends, we notice that now offertory, the presentation of the gifts, has such deep meaning. Next page. Therefore, offertory hymn should consist at least some of these elements. Number one. Next. It should not reflect personal relationships, nor should they be sentimental in nature. Secondly, offertory hymn or hymns during the presentation. Next point. It should reflect community, the communal, the ecclesial dimension of us, the faithful, joining together with Jesus to confess the great works of God through the offering of the sacrifice. And next, it should have the element of praise and joy where the bread and the wine that is being brought up, Christ receives it, transforms it, and presents it to God the Father. So these elements 
will be wonderful to have in a hymn, appropriately contained in the offertory hymn. Let's review one of the hymns in the former edition, C29. Let us break bread together. I'm sure many of us will remember this hymn. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let's review back the purpose of the offer tree. The bread and the wine reflecting, resemble us, representing us, received by Jesus. Jesus unite us with himself, transform us, and offer it up to the Father. Are these elements in this hymn? Too early. <laughs> Sorry, you all know the answer already because my technician has given the answer way early. <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> so if you look at the lyrics of the of this particular song, dear friends, the focus of this song tends to be talking on ourselves. We break the bread. We come on our knees. We fall on our knees. We face the rising sun and we ask God for mercy. Is this a time to ask God for mercy? Doctrinally, it is not appropriate. And the language is too casual. And also its music aspects. Let's look at the... That's why the committee has and revealed the, revealed the answer now. This hymn is omitted. Now, it is your turn to decide the next hymn, dear friends. Let's try to learn the process that the committee underwent. How about this particular hymn? All to Jesus I Surrender. In the former edition, C46. All to Jesus I Surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. Now, what do you think? I employ three elements of review. Doctrinal, the language, oh, and and the, the music quality. At the same time, what was presented just now? What are some of the elements that should not reveal the answer yet? Maybe can you type into the chat? We allow you maybe about uh, 20 seconds to 30 seconds. What do you think? Is this him accepted or not accepted? Can you type in the chat? And uh, all say no. So far, any yes? Wow, you're clever already, huh? So, dear friends, praise the Lord. You have, you have the same uh, experience that the committee has gone through. Looking at the uh, review criteria, this hymn is fundamental. That talks about us. Focus is more on us. I surrender. I freely give. I love. It is very sentimental. And because of that, what is the answer, my dear technician? It is not accepted in this particular revised hymnal. Let's look at another example. And now, Again, let's review this. C8, Lord accept the gifts. I'm sure all of you know this hymn. 
Lord, accept the gifts we offer at this Eucharistic feast. Bread and wine to be transformed now through the action of thy priest. Take us to, O Lord, transform us by thy grace in us increased. 20 seconds. Yes or no? Put it in the chat. I have my lovely assistants here looking through the computer. Any no? No. All? Yes. Wonderful. Give yourself a big, big clap and a very happy smile. <laughs> so the committee as well have decided that this particular hymn of C8 is acceptable because the elements in this particular hymn fulfills the purpose of the offer tree. That is us being received through the bread and wine, Christ receiving us, transforming us, and offering it up to the Father in heaven. So that's why, my dear friends, it's very important whenever we select any hymn to be sung at Mass, firstly, we must identify which part of the Mass hymn is going to be sung. It needs to at least fulfill the purpose of that particular part of the Mass. Then we also have to review the content of the hymn, whether it is doctrinally sound, whether the language is suitable or is it too casual? And the music quality, is it too simple, too, too campfire-like? Or is it more appropriate for edifying God? So then, my dear friends, our committee hope that through this simple process, of course, it's not easy. We admit it is not easy. It took the committee so many years to to go through this process and to be able to familiarize with the process. Along the way, the members of the committee too have some different opinions and ideas. But thank God, it is through the grace of the Holy Spirit and through uh, looking through the documents uh, of the church and to, to be familiar with these documents of the church, slowly our committee members as well have learned so much through this process over the years in undertaking this particular project. So that is why in this workshop tonight, we want to share with you the process and the journey that we have undertaken. Next, communion. GIRM Article 86 explained that the purpose of this particular part of the Mass at communion is to express the spiritual union of the assembly, the communicants, of the unity. Number two, to show the gladness of the heart. Number three, to show clearly the communitarian character when we come up in procession to receive the Eucharist. Next, again, in two other documents that look deeper into the meaning of this particular part of the Mass, Sacramentum Caritatis, Article 14.4, talks about this sacrament of the Eucharist, Jesus draws all of us, the faithful, into His hour. And He is uniting us in a bond that establishes between Him himself and us, between us and the church, between him and the church, and also it talks about the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the fruits of this sacrifice. Ecclesia the Eucharistia, Article 9, talks about the sacrifice of the Lamb and how we are united with the heavenly liturgy to praise that great month together with a great multitude praising God for all that He has done for us. So in that then, 
Next page. What are the elements that we look for, for hymns that are suitable for communion, to be sung during communion? Next. Hymn during communion should talk about the unity of the body of Christ. Next point. We should talk about unity with the church. Number three, with the heavenly liturgy. Number four, to give thanks to the Lord for the fruits of His sacrifice on the cross to save us. So these are some elements that will determine whether a hymn is suitable for this part of the Mass. Let's look at an example. Next page. A hymn taken from the D section of the former hymnal, Gift of Finest Wheat. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. 20 seconds to review. Is this hymn appropriate for communion? Put it into the chat. 20 seconds. Okay, so we have feedback from those who are participating online. Oh, one most uh, almost uh, all will say yes with one unique answer supernatural element is missing wow music may not be so okay but looking at the content especially from doctrinal elements this hymn fulfill the function and purpose of communion so with that then this hymn is in the present compilation next after communion formally we may be more used to the term thanksgiving after communion general instruction the roman missile article 88 when distribution of communion is finished Sometimes when circumstances suggest, the priest and the faithful can spend some time praying privately. Now, if desired, a psalm or other canticle of praise or a hymn may also be sung, may also be sung, not necessary, must be sung by the entire congregation. So what, uh, what is the suitable uh, element for this part of the mass for him to be sung is it is a hymn of praise thanksgiving thanking god for the fruits of his sacrifice on the cross after receiving jesus in communion so i will not go uh, greater detail in this because it's very very clear and the last part that choir normally sings at Mass. Next page. Recessional hymn. Now, dear friends, here we like to uh, just bring to your attention something that we also have discovered in our journey during the review process. General instruction of the Roman Missal actually does not mention anything about singing during this part of the Mass. But Traditionally, we see in almost all churches that choir sings a hymn during the procession out of the ministers and also as the people leave the church. So, recessional hymn traditionally tends to accompany the procession out of ministers. Next page, we'd like to quote to you from this article celebrating the Mass a Pastoral Introduction by the Catholic Bishops Conference of UK and Wales, where it says, 
the use of a final hymn or recessional hymn at Mass, which keeps ministers and assembly in their place after the dismissal, actually detracts from what the dimension of the missionary imperative. What is the missionary imperative? If you remember back the last part of the priest or the celebrant, go and proclaim the gospel by your life. Go. So the imperative mission is to actually, after, after the blessing, is to actually go home straight away. Therefore, the use of instrumental music, particularly maybe an organ piece, will be more appropriate during this moment in time. So dear friends, I just like to draw your attention to the former edition of the SYPG. If you are very familiar, I'm sure all of us are very familiar with the uh, former edition. What is the first section of him? Under A. What is the color page of A? Which is blue in color. And what does it say? What is the title in front of section A? What is the purpose of section A hymns in the old SYPG? It is written, if you have an old SYPG with you, it is written, entrance hymn. So all the hymns in the blue page of section A is actually hymns suitable for the entrance. Now, how about the next part? The next page under section B, which is actually, if you refer back to your old SYPG, it is yellow in color. So what is the purpose of this particular hymn? What is the classification? It is classified as meditation songs and acclamation. Let's go on to the third page, third section. Third section is green in color. And what is that green color section classification? Offer three hymns. So far, okay, it follows. And next, the fourth section, which is the white page, white pages. It is classified under D as communion and thanksgiving hymns. And dear friends, what should the last section, the next section be, section E? Can you type in the chat? What do you think is section E? Which is green, the green page. After communion and after the thanksgiving, what is the next part? I'm referring to the old SYPG of classification. You are right, dear friends. Many of you type in the chat. The next category is Advent and Christmas. Where is the recessional? Even way back then, in 85, even earlier, this, our hymnal already recognized there is no recessional hymn. So that's why, dear friends, Based on the exercise undertaken by this committee, we have reported it to the bishop and uh, we inform bishop. So they say that let's be faithful to the liturgical documents. And if choirs were to sing a hymn during this part of the mass to accompany procession out, you may continue to do so. And where can we find hymns that are suited? In the new uh, revised hymnal, you can find from the other sections of the Mass, which is from the other uh, Mass for the various occasions. So you can look for suitable hymns there. So next page. we like to share with you a little bit more principles adopted by the committee. The committee also looked at hymns that govern or guide us to choose hymns that are appropriate or not appropriate for mass. 
this particular principle that talks about hymns as if God is speaking in the first person. If you look at the underline, the committee adopted this principle that in principle, we do not encourage hymns that identify the singer with God because this will induce doctrinal error and hymns like this should never be used. However, any such hymn, if closely tied to scriptural text, because sometimes scriptural text is in the first person that God is speaking, that would not in any danger of any doctrinal confusion. And this type of hymns related very closely to scripture cannot be excluded. So meaning to say, dear friends, if we have hymns that require the choir to sing the words I representing God, avoid these hymns. Example, next page. Next page. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will say. And this I is God himself talking. So this hymn is not included in the present compilation of SYPG. Next. Thank you. Next point. Hymns that reiterate on the right back the entire readings that we have just heard. So hymns like this should also be avoided and not used at Mass. Because in CCC 1157, one of the principles uh, that we have adopted in the, by the committee, the purpose of singing is to glorify the Lord, not so much catechetical or teaching. It is the purpose to glorify God. So sometimes we have hymns like this, next page, where the gospel talks about, recently we just celebrated one or two Sundays ago, that talks about this new commandment that the Lord has given us. D27-1 from the previous Sing Your Praise to God. A new commandment I give unto you. So dear friends, when this hymn repeats back the entire gospel narration, avoid this type of hymns. We have other hymns that talk about the commandment to love. That expresses the love of God, praising God for His love for us. And for us to share that love with one another. So hymns like this, avoid. Next. Next. So we'd like to share with you as well some proper terminology uh, that we have adopted to be consistent with the new Roman Missal. Next. The entrance chant or hymn. So to replace the word song. Next. Next point. Him after communion. Next. And as we shared just now, it is foreign to the Roman rite or the practice of having a recessional hymn or final hymn. Next. The word time now is used to replace the word season. Therefore, we call it the Easter time or the Christmas time instead of Easter season, Christmas season. Next. These are the classifications that we see in the new hymnal that is consistent with the new Roman Missal and the GIRM. Next. The entrance. And here we'd like to encourage the use before you sing an entrance hymn to use the entrance chant as what we have seen in the content from uh, page 20 onwards. 
uh, those chants that are given. So we like to encourage encourage these chants to be used. Next, it is called the entrance. Offer tree. Next, the communion. Next, after communion. And some of the seasonal hymns that we have, hymns for Easter time, Christmas time, Advent, and Lent. Next, we have hymns for various occasions, as we have seen already earlier. Next, we have, of course, the Marian hymns, Latin hymns, and the sequences. Next. So Marian hymns is very much a tradition of the church they are sung prayers. So, it, so these are included in the hymnal. Next, we also have the Latin hymns also included in our hymnal, in the revised hymnal. Next, devotional hymns, especially for, whole, for the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So these hymns are also in our hymnal for our use. Next. However, hymns for the liturgy of the hours, we have not included it in this compilation because there is a separate booklet that is already in existence that you can refer to and use. Hymns are in that booklet for the liturgy of the hours. Next. For the responsorial psalm, the committee did not put any composition of responsorial psalm into this particular compilation because there's already available the graduale romanum, the graduale simplex, and other psalm resources. So that is why it is not included in the revised hymnal. Next. So dear friends, Hopefully, what we have shared tonight will be helpful to introduce this hymnal, the new outlook and the format and the layout. And if you do encounter uh, some feedback, some uh, maybe typo error, or you have other suggestions how this hymnal can be further improved, do contact our liturgical music committee at this particular address. So at this point in time, I just like to draw your attention to the, uh, to the entrance uh, antiphon and the communion antiphon, our chants. Can you refer to page 20, 2, 0? So these are the sum tones on page 20. These are the sum tones for the antiphons as what was shared just now. We like to encourage, especially at the entrance, to actually chant the antiphon. Then you can follow by the entrance hymn. So if the chant, for example, on page 21, if you see the chant is a four-line chant, so you can use the on page 20, and there are three suggestions of uh, some tones for a four-liner antiphon. So you can choose any one of them. I just like to draw an example. If you look on page 40, page 40. If you look at uh, page 40 on Holy Trinity, the most Holy Trinity, which we are about to celebrate, the entrance and different. Blessed be God, the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for He has shown us His merciful love. So we can use any one of the uh, three suggestions suggested sum tone or if you have other sum tones you may also use them give me joy. 
justice, O God, and beat my cause against the nation that is faithless. Uh, sorry, eh? uh, I'm singing the wrong week. Most Holy Trinity. Bless me, God the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for oh, He has shown us His merciful love. Something like that. Yeah. So if the antiphon is a three liner, you can apply it to the uh, suggested three liner sum tone. If the antiphon has a two liner uh, antiphon, you can use any one of the uh, two liner sum tone suggested or other resources that you may have. And now at this point in time, I'd like to invite my, uh, my friend, that is uh, Ching Mei, to share a little bit more about chanting, especially on chanting the antiphons. Ching Mei. Good evening, everybody. It's rather good night. Uh, a slight, a little bit of apologetic before I begin. This is a little bit impromptu, um, but I was happy to take it on. So please give me your comments. Most of you have heard what I'm going to say um, soon. Now, hello, testing, one, two, three, four. Is, is that better? Okie dokes. All right. So we have heard a lot about chance about what is required. I would like to cover what you have to do to prepare yourself. Apart from the usual things that people will say to you, right, you need to pray, you need to read, you need to do, you need to do that. So I would like to address, to title this short segment. I hope it's short. Please give me a yell if I'm running a little, you know, a bit too long. Encountering the word Beg your pardon. Encountering the word W, capital W, with every fiber of my being. So this is a short, like a how-to. We've heard a lot of what is to be sung, what is to be done, how do we analyze um, all these texts and, and all these hymns. I would like to suggest a way that you may prepare to chant. So a slight preamble, first of all, the chant, when we say the word chant, it can be a noun or it can be a verb. If it is a noun, we, one of its um, descriptions could be repeated rhythmic phrases. Where would you hear this? At a football game? Per se! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per se! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the idea? So repeat it as Manchester, no, Liverpool! Manchester, Liverpool. So that's a chant, a kind of shouting. Then the second classification of what a chant is, it is a short musical passage for singing unmetrical words. Let me read that again. Short musical passage for singing unmetrical words. Okay? So I said it was a noun, now it's a verb something to be done. A chant is to shout. You shout, Manchester, Liverpool, right? Great outpouring of energy and a great outpouring of volume and sound. Then we have chant as a noun, more in our kind of context. To sing, listen, to sing these unmetrical phrases. What do we mean by unmetrical. That means you can't put it in left, right, left, right. Um, sort of like new life, new life. You can tap, 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 tap. Call it a beat if you like. Now, why do we need a chant? First of all, a lot of scripture, particularly the Psalms, they don't, they don't fall very nicely into a square box of new life, new life. I'll give you an example when I tried to force something onto an antiphon. Oh, 
Okay, let's take, for example, this extraordinarily long antiphon on page 49 um, in your new hymnal. Entrance antiphon for the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. All that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment and so forth. I could try. All that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment. The thing breaks down. You can't squeeze it in. So you need something musical that will carry these words and carry them in some sensible manner. And what I mean by sensible manner, now we're getting to this aspect of to be involved with every fiber of your being. We all want to do that, right? We want to be involved. We want our interior to be connected. But sometimes I think you're quiet, Felissa. You leave your brains behind, you know. We are mortal. We are flesh and blood. We see things. We hear things. We smell things. We taste things. And we touch things. And all of these things are engaged during the celebration of the Eucharist, whether you are choir member or not. Uh, this includes the priest. Uh, please remember also. Uh, you by far have the most touch to contend with. Okay? You eat the body of Christ. So when we talk about every fiber of your brain, you receive input from all these senses. You also have some kind of input from within. Call it the spirit, call it the instinct. So you've got five physical senses plus that one very spiritual, intuitive, call it what you like. So how do we measure both? Because Neil has mentioned interiority. The documents mention that connectedness. We need to be prepared to be able to be aware of all our physical, all our environment, yet be centered enough to pray, to chant that psalm. And if you're a responsorial psalmist, believe me, all of you have got the nervousness of learning, of trying to get into the psalm, being afraid that you might not sing the right tune. Let me assure you, the tune is the last of your concerns. The very first aspect, how do we then encounter this word in such an intimate way? We use our senses. We connect our senses to the word before us. Okay, I'm going to take an aside before I get really intense about this, because uh, this is just, the rest of it is, uh, I get through the technical things first. To so those new to chant, let's give you an idea of what we have and what we sing using, say, the hymns uh, identification. Hymns, metrical. I gave the example of new life, new life. You came to bring us new left, right, left, right. And then we have what I call is a kind of halfway between chant, halfway between a melodic, uh, the strophic singing. It is notated, oh, by the way, priestly people is number 273 if you've got a fast finger. Now, it is notated in a very musical, very metrical way. Priest, oh, sorry, too high. Priestly people, kingly people. If somebody who didn't see the page will tell you, ah, well, it's chanting. So it has, while it is notated like a modern piece of music, when you render it properly, it sounds like a chant, right? Then the next category, the final category, which we're talking about, is true chant. Okay? But having said that, I'm going to comfort all of you and give you all great inspiration to go and do your tantum ergo. There is chant, which is, has its basic text as poetry. And the tom tom ergo is one of them. Tantum ergo. And so, oh, wait a minute. Page are we? If you are fast with your fingers, please turn to page three, two, uh, three, one, nine. So here we get this beautiful uh, uh, a poem. You can go and Google yourself. Uh, who wrote it? I don't need to tell you. Tantum ergo sacramentum veneremo cernui. Et anticum. All right. So the people says, we don't know Latin. Turn the next page. Three, two, zero. 
then you have another poem. Down in adoration falling, lo, the sacred host we hail. So we have, first of all, seen the text. See the page, huh? Please, you must know what's on the page. Don't read the wrong line. And then, tactile. Uh, please don't talk about iPads, iPhones, all that. Huh? The experience is tactile. Your book is a sacramental. The only purpose you have a hymnal is so that you can go and scream your lungs out during mass. Huh? It's not for you to throw at the cat or go and jam your door open. Huh? Okay? So this is a sacramental. I have a very special copy here. Many thanks and da 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 from Monsignor Len uh, Father Leonard Lexon. So I got autographed copy from the boss himself. Okay, even more double have to I have a sacramental, right? So there we are, chant. The preparation is visual, what you see on the page. To those of you preparing responsorial psalm, how many times have you read your responsorial psalm? If anything, under eight figures, you haven't done it enough. Eight figures is more than a million, huh? Why? You expect to prepare, to chant, chant, when you, when you, if you're not reflected on it, the words don't mean anything. You can't connect it with the first reading or the second. And all you worry about is, am I going to sing the right tune? Am I going to sing the right tune? What is this? Every, you know, we are people of the word. And you can't even be trusted to read the, the words. Start with the words. If you don't start with the words, I will hear about it. Quite literally. So we connect with the eyes. We look at the words. Our time. We make time, I'm sorry, folks, you just have to practice. We make time to sit with the words. All the antiphons are biblical. Biblical, my dear friends, we talk about singing scripture. This is perfect chance. And now we don't have to worry about whether it is liturgically correct or not, because antiphon texts are the official texts of mass. So get used to it. So we talk about chants being connected with the eyes, with the ears, because when you pray with these words, I don't know about you, la, yeah, somebody mentioned about supernatural. You spend a few million times reading and reflecting with the words. Uh, they talk to you and you know. You can sit down and it goes to your head, well, the Lord is my shepherd. And the words talk to you and you haven't said a word. Invest the time in exercising to sit quietly and read it. If you're on a bus, run those words in your head. Till somebody calls Tanjung Rambutan. Huh? Pray those words. Pray does not mean you go somewhere, light the candle, put, two, put the cross and two candles and then kneel down and for 36 hours and pray. You don't need to do that. You need to repeat those words till they take possession of your entire being. If, you see, I'm not even talking about singing. This is the very first preparatory step. The basis of chant is words. We just said short passages or longer passages to convey unmetrical words. If you don't know the words, what are, you con what, are you, what are you conveying? What are you communicating? Does that make sense? Okay, I'm seeing everybody suddenly bury themselves in the boards. Don't, 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 don't look at me. Ah, do it, people. All right. How do we prepare? We talked about sense and touch. We need to breathe. Doctors, ah, don't breathe, die, right? Don't have to be doctors. Don't breathe, die. Don't breathe, die. I know, I have said, if you are in my choir, I prefer you to die than breathe in the wrong place. Okay, so we need to take the breath. Where do we take the breath? We need to recognize the words, the essence of the prayer. Now, Neil has mentioned three-line psalms, four-line psalms. Sometimes, it doesn't quite fall into three or four lines. How do we know? What is the sense of the prayer? What is the sense, the words, are trying to convey to you. I am sorry if I do not have a 101 list for you to check out. Oh, I've done that. I've checked that. 
by the time you get to 100, ooh, that's the answer, that's where I breathe. Sorry lah. Only those words which speak to you can tell you lah. But there are obvious, other more obvious um, signs. Eyes, please, eyes. Things like punctuation. Everybody know the joke about eats, shoots and leaves, right? Punctuation. And not all commas are born the same. Give you an example why not all commas are born the same. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. That is if you equate. My singing teacher said to sing at every comma. Okay, you've just done that. That makes complete gibberish of the prayer. So, listening, the ears, to what you are doing. All of you possess some handphone or some kind. Can you go and press the record button and listen to yourself? Huh? It'll be Revelation chapter 378.7. Okay? I can see a lot of faces very understanding what I'm saying. So, breathe. Yeah? I know you chikung people are all smiling like nobody's business. You need to breathe. You need to breathe before you start. You need to breathe so that the phrase is recognized. And you need to breathe when you finish. Why do you need to breathe before you start? If you're a singer, yes, that's a technical issue. But there is a deeper issue of being connected to the liturgy. That moment that you take your breath is the acknowledgement that the liturgical action has passed from what was happening before to you. The baton of the liturgical action has been passed to you. So you do the chant, you do your responsorial psalm, you do your hymn, breathe properly in the middle. Huh? And then when you finish, you breathe. This is an acknowledgement that your duty for this part is over, but it is not the end of the chant. It's not the end of the music. It is an acknowledgement that you are passing that baton which you held of the liturgical action to the next section or to the next person. Have you had things like, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Oh, Christ have mercy. Hey, wake up. Ah. So not recognizing the phrasing and the character. And if you've got a good choir master, even if you don't know, they will put in the breath marks for you and tell you where you breathe. Okay? There are important reasons for the rest. And, and dear Reverend Fathers, if you're listening, please don't rush into something after your choir has finished. If you have a particularly resonant church, ah, you may be ending the, the tail end of what the angels are trying to do, okay? So, breathe, reflect, read, see, be possessed by the words, every fiber of your being. Any doctors there will tell you when you breathe, your entire body is activated, it comes alive. You know, they give you technical things like Sarah, toning, whatever else kind of thing. Lah. So it is an actual physical response. Chant requires a great deal of breathing. You don't breathe properly, you aren't going to get even the first note out. Well, you may be able to, but you'll find you were wobbling by the third note, third word. Okay? Recognize the punctuation. Recognize the text. Recognize the context of the text. So that is chant. Now, I want to give you a, a, an example when we talk about music. Oh, here's something from the dictionary. I missed this out. Now, when we talk about chant in our context, we're talking about Gregorian chant. Not from Transylvania. Gregor. Um, dictionaries say it is plain song or some have heard of the term plain chant refers for specifically to the liturgical chant of the Roman Catholic Church. Gregorian chant or plain song or plain chant is the liturgical chant of the Roman Catholic Church. I didn't get this from liturgy book, okay? I went and looked for a secular music dictionary. 
right? So let's remember that. Liturgical, liturgical, Roman Catholic. All right, so let's take an example of Corpus Christi. New hymnal, page four zero. Most holy body and blood of Christ. We'll do very straightforward two lines, communion antiphon. I'm using an alternative chart tone, um, a much older one. So, very short words, right? Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. If I'd stopped there, I couldn't sing it. What did Neil say? Was attached, says the Lord. And it is attached. Those of you who don't have the antiphon or the hymnal, if you looked in your Roman Missal, it's in there too. Okay? So we see, after blood, um, I don't think you have it, but in my copy, it has a star. So if you want to put a breath mark um, after blood, write a letter V or, you know, put some indication. Okay? And then, remains in me and I in him has a comma. Um, okay, take the breath. But that is a place of articulation. It's not somewhere where you go, uh, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, <gasps> remains in me and I in him. <gasps> says the Lord. It's a place of articulation so that you identify the phrase. You Actually, most of the time when we chant, uh, you don't need to know very much except to be aware of where to breathe and where the punctuation is. Because you are conscious, because you are connected to those words, it will come across in the singing. No extra work required. Okay? That is why chant is so accessible to everybody. Okay? Then we look at the words, have you seen it? When whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, breathing point, remains in me and I in him. Well, if you need to, squeeze, but make it quick. Squeeze a breath. Then let's try this in its phrases. Um, can we have a volunteer? Uh, Father, could you please just read the words of whoever eats my flesh? <laughs> Whoever eats my flesh. Whoever eats my flesh and, and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Okay. Right, so I need to speed this up. Why did I make him read why did Father read it for me? Now we come to how fast this chant travel. Please, it is an Lord. Chant isn't slow. The basis of the rhythm of chant is the spoken language. So, Father, if you would read that again. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Now, how can we exercise this? You get a reader, get your family member. Father, could you do it again? And I'm going to overlay this. I'm going to do this recto tono, okay? Whoever, whoever eats, eats my keep going, Father. Whoever, whoever eats, eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says, says the Lord. Lord. Not slow, is it? Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. That determines how fast or how slow you do these antiphons and these psalms. Um, if you, I'm not making any sense, just post it and we'll try and, and get some tutorial out to you. So that covers the rhythm and it covers the reflection and it covers what chant and how you prepare to do chant. Okay, my, 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 my time is like up and beyond and whatever. Um, I hope it has been of some help, yeah? Um, and I'm sorry if it all has been rather um, on the um, levity side of things. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Neil, and thank you, Father Leonard, for asking me. I'm sorry this is so incomplete, but we will stop here because I'm sure people got lots of questions about all sorts of things. Thanks very much.
thank you to Cheng Mei for uh, elaborating on the chant and uh, some of the proper way of uh, chanting. So dear friends, uh, this is the last part of our workshop this, uh, this evening. Uh, we're going to try to answer all the questions that have been forwarded to us. Uh, both, uh, I think the committee uh, will be here to add on some uh, re response to the questions. This question, why does the church, church's inherited chant notation is not found in this hymnal? So just to inform that the committee has made a conscious decision uh, to use only the standard music format of a five liner notation to be consistent so this is the reason why the like for example the gregorian chan format notation is not included at the moment in this particular hymnal uh, father you have anything you want to add and um it is to be um universal at this present moment how we would appreciate the music notation as such i know many who are have this understanding of wanting to retain the traditions that are there, uh, we take it as, for this moment, we take the standard music format. The next question, is there any more uh, offertory antiphon in the Mass of the ordinary form after Vatican II as they are in the Roman gradual? If yes, can it be considered to be included uh, the offertory antiphon in the next printing of SYPG. Uh, we just like to inform that the hymn, the hymnal uses the antiphons, yeah, uh, as contained in our Roman Missal. Next question. Uh, hope that uh, this one is already being answered. Uh, and the next question is: Quite a few Latin hymns are included in the new hymnal. Are we encouraged to sing in Latin? Answer is yes, as Latin is very much uh, our, in our Catholic tradition. And the second part of the question, are Bahasa hymns limited to Bahasa masses? Yes, this particular hymnal is uh, contain only the English uh, hymns as it relates to masses in English. However, we would just like to inform you that they will be uh, other language hymnals being looked at in due time. So this particular liturgical music committee, as a start, only look at the English Mass for as, as a start. The next question, is our new hymnal a mix of traditional? Is it a, or is it mixed with the charismatic nature of hymns? Our hymnal consists of materials for Catholic Mass only, uh, as uh, quite a number of the hymns which are charismatic in nature in the former edition, they actually do not, uh, they are not Catholic in nature, either they are liturgical in nature. That is why they are not included in this uh, revised hymnal. Are there plans, next question, are there plans to include inculturated music in upcoming editions? So the answer is this will be this is a possibility to be considered when the other language hymnals start to be looked at. Next question: Why were traditional hymns such as "Glory to God on High" uh, not included? There are actually three here. I'll address it one at a time. "Glory to God on High" has not been included because this is a paraphrase from the uh, liturgical text of glory to God, uh, glory to God in the highest. So anything that does not uh, follow the exact liturgical text is not included in the hymnal. And there was a question also, how about amazing grace? Why is it not included in this hymnal? Because this particular hymn focuses more on the self rather than glorifying God. And how about the hymn, God of Mercy? God of Mercy is actually more, meant more for devotion, especially for the, during uh, 
stations at the cross and also for personal reflection. Yeah. So it will be more suitable outside of mass. Father, you have to respond to that. Other one is okay. Yeah? The next question regarding can we have a list of public domain hymns? Uh, and can the public domain hymns can be projected? Yes, if the hymns are in the public domain, which is more than 99 years, uh, it can be projected as these hymns no longer have any copyright hold. So you can uh, project it and we do have a list of the public domain hymns in our present uh, revised hymnal. What are the hymns in this present hymnal that are in the public domain? We will be most happy to share you that list. Can we sing the hymns if we credit the author or composer of the hymn? You need to, if it is under copyright, you need to have license. You need to have the permission for use. Are we allowed to sing other Catholic hymns that are not in the current SYPG hymnal during Mass? Again, we have to follow, of course, the criteria, uh, the criteria whether it is suitable for Mass and whether it is, you have the copyright permission. To use those materials. Does the copyright laws of not projecting copyright hymns only apply to church mass projection? Father, you have to answer this. At this point in time, we have begun with the hymnal for our church, our, for the use at the, every Eucharistic celebration. Obviously, in time, it's going to affect all other aspects of our church's life. I presume you're talking about uh, when we come together for praise and worship, when we come together for maybe other forms of devotion, if there are songs that are going to use or hymns that are going to use, in due time, I believe this also be will affect us. Sir. So we have not gone to that level as yet. We are taking the first task of what the bishops have required of us is to come up with this uh, hymnal with copyright. And uh, we will look into this matter. Uh, actually, it has been uh, in a manner of... Not to discuss, but we have thought about it, but we're saying it'll take uh, a process. So be prepared, perhaps, in the course of time, that even uh, when we go into public projection during our uh, other forms of uh, worship, probably would be we would be requiring a copyright. But I cannot say more than that at this moment. Huh? Where can I get a copy of the hymnal? Please contact your local diocese. The church, your diocesan office, or if you have a diocesan bookshop, or even your diocesan liturgical commission, uh, as uh, each diocese have already ordered, and the books, the hymnal have already been sent to the respective dioceses. Uh, maybe Sandra, you want to say anything on this? Okay, so the a uh, hymnal has been already sent to each respective diocese in our conference. Regarding the new hymnal, there are numerous new hymns where we are not very familiar with the tune because our player is not a pianist. They are just keyboardists. Are there any music player or can we still use the old one? Um, this particular a hymnal is trying to cover as as many of the seasons as possible uh, and there are quite a number of uh, perhaps new hymns to many of you do not worry because if you are un not familiar you can always refer to youtube youtube actually have a lot of uh, these hymns you can listen to the melody uh, already in the youtube so uh, do check ensure that the title and the lyrics are the same uh, as in the hymnal, and you can listen to the melody there uh, for as a sample. Yeah. Next question. It will be good to have an addition for the organist and pianist, as well as musician. So the accompaniment addition that are meant for musicians will be out uh, sometime soon. It is in the process. Yeah. So we will let you know once the accompaniment edition 
is already available. So at the moment, it's not ready yet. Would there be a soft copy of the accompaniment version made available for musician or just hard copy? Yes, it is only in hard copy, not available uh, for the e version. Is it possible to sell digital copies? For some choirs who are moving slowly to digital sheets, and since it is this thick book is difficult, especially for musicians, uh, Father? That's a different cost entirely for at this level. So we have not gone into digital copies. We're taking it one step at a time. So walk with us that we take the, the first effort is this book. And we will look into all your suggestions and considerations and we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up in our, 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 our meeting. Yeah? Uh, E-book format, uh, I think Father has already answered that. Uh, we will not be available as it involves totally separate uh, license for that. Uh, there are no hymns to the Sacred Heart in the hymnal because this is devotion. This particular hymnal uh, focuses more on the Mass for the time being. We also did mention in the presentation about devotional in relation to the sacrament, uh, where is in, th in terms of uh, the Eucharist, where we have the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So a different understanding of that. So we have not picked up any form of devotional, personal piety. This is all called, uh, in a manner of speaking, personal piety. We, the hymns that are not meant for celebrations during the Mass. Would the slides of the presentation tonight be shared? Yes, it will be made available at the end of the session. I found a few mistakes in the scores in the hymnal with the lyrics and notes. Are you correcting them for the musician's edition? Please let us know. Uh, feedback to us what you have found so that we can make the necessary correction. Not with the book, with the people's edition but perhaps with the musicians, uh, the accompaniment. The antiphon sum tones on page 20, they are, uh, each uh, liner has uh, three suggestions. Uh, do these correspond to, uh, to different liturgical seasons? Actually, no, it was put in uh, not to correspond to any particular liturgical season. And, and to the question also about entrance chant, does it replace the entrance antiphon? We're actually referring to the entrance antiphon. The entrance chant as in relate to the entrance antiphon. It does not replace, we're actually referring to one and the same. It will be good to include recommendations for appropriate instruments used and probably the tempo. I believe this will be addressed in the accompaniment edition. Uh, the question, the, the next question that we received, can we write our own tune to the responsible psalm? Yes, you can, but please adhere to the guidelines of the responsible psalm, especially to the Gregorian. Okay, there's a question here as well. How about Teze and some common Protestant hymns are uh, allowed like give thanks, you raise me up. So they, we have again uh, we have to remind that we have to follow the criteria that the liturgical committee have uh, uh, adopted. That is based on Catholic doctrine and also the language and the musical trait. Uh, there is also some questions of why certain hymns are not included in the hymnal. Uh, Monsieur, like to respond to that. Uh, sorry, Father. Okay. Now bear in mind uh, that when about 11 of us had come over the last five or six, five years at least before the book uh, finally came out uh, in terms of processing it, um, we, we tried not to uh, um, we look at what is the, uh, 
how do you put it? The choices the, according to, you say, uh, uh, in terms of level uh, one, two, three, we take the first level, we put them into the selections. Then if not enough, we take the second level and we hardly went to the third, you know. In, in that sense, some of the hymns that you might find in the old SYPG, not there, not because we don't want to put it there, because as we, as we also mentioned, in terms of the, the music element, you know, where some of it may have what you call um, very, uh, if, I'm, if I may use the term campfire style or of that like, so we omit it. It's not about, again, that we have, uh, that we don't want to uh, include those hymns. Um, how else to describe it also, the human factor of five, of five, of five years coming together, sorting it out and putting it to the best we can and this is what we have come up with. So if there are hymns that you are familiar with and not there, uh, uh, we have to move forward. Uh, I, I do not know how else to express it, but there will be hymns definitely that you would want to be, to, uh, to be present in this book, but it's not there. And uh, our task was to make it as, as faithful to the Eucharistic celebration and also to the reality of our Lady, Marian devotions, uh, uh, the Marian hymns as such, and also uh, the legacy, if I may use, of regards to the Latin hymns. So um, we move forward, and uh, that's, that's the best I can answer your question with regards to that. Okay. Um, okay. So thank you for your presence. We know that this book uh, has come uh, after about five, six years. Just remember that there's, I think, 11 of us, I think 11, eh? 11 of us, we have our flaws. We are not perfect. We did our very best according to the uh, request of the Bishop's Conference to come up with a hymnal that will have copyright. So we may not have project, uh, uh, put in uh, the hymns that you would want to see project uh, into the book or even uh, the perhaps some of this evangelical and Pentecostal hymns that you would like to sing, which is not. What our intention was clearly to look at the mass, to look at uh, the Catholic theology, the liturgical, understand the doctrinal teachings, everything all included. And uh, we went forward with that understanding. Even for us, the 11 of us, we had to go through a process of, you know, um, questioning one another, looking at all the documents. So it took, it took us, um, in fact, every year we would be meeting for quite a number of meetings over the years in order to come to some realization. So um, we did our best. I think it's a, it's a way forward. And perhaps in the course of the years to come, like as we began with 1970, and then the second edition, 1985, it was a progression of what was needed at that point in time because of the lack of the uh, English hymns. So all kinds of hymns was put into the uh, uh, SYPG hymnal. as where we progress and begin to realize the understanding of what we celebrate. Then there's a need also to help us to correct ourselves, to move in line with the celebration of the Eucharist. So for us at this point in time, this is where we are. Perhaps 10 years or 15 years down the road, the next committee will look at it and review it and, uh, and fine tune it to make it even better. So that's what we want to see, that the church journeys together, that we are all on the same page, giving our very best to glorify God with the hymns that have been uh, published to this hymnal. Huh? So, um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I know that uh, in this in this situation, I know the last question that is thrown, I don't want to read it, um, but it talks about, I want it my way, you want it your way, they want it that way, do it God's way. You know? And in the, the, what I'm trying to get at is that there will be challenges in trying to move forward because we have been, there will be those who have been so uh, a stickler for a certain style of music, a certain a way of doing it, and now this hymnal is kind of restricting us. It is not actually restricting us. It's helping us to move forward to recognize the beauty of Catholic uh, theology through hymns, you know. And uh, we, 
perhaps what we must do is we need to pray and ask the Lord to open our all our senses to recognize the beauty that we have in and move forward in that direction. So we will have uh, challenges. Definitely, it's not going to be easy. Uh, either from priests to the five masters to the five members or to the community, there are going to be challenges. But that's in a way for us to grow, to recognize where God is leading us, so that we fine tune ourselves to purify our intentions, our motives, and be one. Um, okay. All right. I hand you over to Eileen. Huh? Um, there was a question about the link to this this session, the PowerPoint presentation. If you are, uh, if you wish to have them, you could email us. Got the email address just now. Um, otherwise, uh, we will send to all your priests. That is in ERLC. They will send it to all the choir members, all the religious the priests. If you still can't get it, never mind. You got our email address. We will send it to you. Okay. So we will close this evening. Once again, to all our participants, thank you for your presence and your concern and your interest and your desire to move to walk uh, to move forward to walk together with our clergy our religious and and with everyone else in this journey of wanting to worship god in spirit and in truth and to recognize that this is the direction we are taking and hope we will all work together and uh, give glory to god in the manner that the bishops conference have actually directed us with the first intention of copyright and subsequently with the with the criteria that came along the way. So with this, thank you for your, your presence. Pray for pray for one another. Pray for the not just the success, but the faithfulness of our community, our 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 faithful to be able to get this going together in all our parishes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for giving us this time. Help us to continue to understand your call for us in this direction where the hymnal has been presented to our faithful. And with all the questions and concerns that still will come about over time, Lord, it's only you who can pave the way for us to understand the process and the intention and the desire to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. So bless each and every one of us as we go back to our own parishes together with our clergy and our and our and our religious that we will work together for your greater glory and for the good of all of our faithful we make this our prayer through christ our lord the almighty god bless you the father the son and holy spirit let us praise the lord thanks be to god good night god bless Good night, everybody. God bless.